Hi, and welcome to Prama Full Cup. I'm your host, Natalie Mullen, a certified wellness educator, speaker, facilitator, and teacher. Prama Full Cup is a mental wellness education podcast that helps women prioritize their wellness and put themselves first because you can't pour from an empty cup. I present unique wellness tips and strategies in ways that are relatable and practical and can be adopted for your lifestyle. Whether I'm speaking at an event, facilitating a workshop, or coaching clients, I'm passionate about helping women dream big, take action, and move the needle forward to achieve the life they want. Now, let's get started. Hey y'all, this is my 43rd episode. Woohoo! I am so happy you're here, and today we are talking all about growth and evolving, and I hope you find this episode helpful. And if you do, Share it with a friend on WhatsApp or on Instagram or text, whatever. I would love to hear your thoughts and just let me know what you think, which is the same thing. Anyways, before we get into that, I just want to do the check-in. This is a time, maybe in your busy day, maybe you're just listening to this first thing in the morning, maybe you're commuting to work, maybe you're at work, maybe you're on your way home. I don't know. No matter where this finds you in your day, I want you to just check in with yourself and see how you're doing. Just take a moment to pause, reflect, and touch base with yourself. How is your joy today? What's your energy like? How are you feeling? As I said, today we're talking all about growth and evolution. And a couple of weeks ago, I was watching a vlog from Adrian Bylon Houghton. And she was talking about her son. And, you know, her son was turning one. And she was just talking about the kind of party that she wanted to throw for his birthday. And she was saying that. She was planning a really simple party because she didn't want him to be overstimulated. She wanted him to be comfortable. She didn't want all these people there and to have like this big fuss and hoopla. And she was saying that if you had asked her a year prior, she never would have imagined that that's the type of party she would throw for him. She loves to throw very big, elaborate parties. She likes a lot of details. And so, you know, a year ago, she would have thought that's the kind of party she would throw for her son. But she said, like, I've changed now that I know this little boy. I just want him to be happy. I don't care about what other people think about the party. I'm planning it for him. I just want it to be our family, our closest friend. And she was really confident in that decision. And, you know, as a celebrity, of course, there's a lot of pressure that they face keeping up with the Joneses, right? Of comparing themselves to others and trying to have parties that outdo each other. And it's the same thing for regular people as well. People are always comparing themselves to their friends and say, oh, well, this person had this at this person's party, so I've got to do better. I've got to do more. And I realize this happens especially a lot with parents. And I know for my son's first birthday, uh, I kind of shared very similar thoughts to Adrian. I was like, I am not going over the top. He is one and never going to remember this. But at the same time, I do want to celebrate this occasion. And so I did something that I felt comfortable with. And, you know, anyways, this is not about me. This story is about Adrian. So as she was talking about this kind of party she was going to be throwing for her son, He said something that really resonated with me. And what she said is that, you know, she's not who she thought she would be. She's not the person she thought she would be, but that she's allowed to grow. We're allowed to grow. We're allowed to evolve. And I think it's so important to talk about this and to get that message out more. Because sometimes people want to hold you to being the same person that you were five years ago, 10 years ago, even a year ago. And a lot of times they remember perhaps your flaws or your mistakes, and they don't even consider that you might not be that person anymore. And truthfully, you shouldn't be. You should hopefully be different. Hopefully you have 
evolved. Hopefully you've changed your mindset, your attitude, your actions. As you learn better, as you learn more, you do better, right? And sometimes it's not a bad thing, but you know, we all mature at different paces. And sometimes even you have that friend that's still doing X, Y, Z, and you're like, actually, I'm not interested in that anymore. Or I just have a different set of priorities. I have a different set of interests. And sometimes they have a hard time accepting that. And that's okay. And I I understand that that can be difficult, but that's on them. If you have evolved, if you have grown, if you have decided that you've become a different person and the person that you are today is closer in alignment with the person that you want to be, because I feel like we're always in a constant evolution, right? We're always working towards a closer version of who we want to be or or just a, a deeper, more fuller version of the person that we want to be or that the person we already are. But there's always growth because in life, if you're not going forward, then you're actually regressing because you can't just stay still because life is in forward motion. Life keeps going. The clock keeps ticking. So therefore, we need to keep moving. We need to keep evolving. We need to keep growing. Otherwise, that stagnancy becomes a regression and that is counterproductive. And so something you often hear about is in relationships, right? One person outgrows the other. And relationships can face all these different challenges because Sometimes um, as individuals grow and evolve, their interests change or their values and their priorities may change. And this often leads to a misalignment between partners. So maybe they want shared common goals and values, and then you find that they're headed in different directions after a while. Or one person's headed in one direction and the other person is just kind of staying exactly where they were however many years ago. And another problem can be sometimes if one person is advancing in life and the other person doesn't feel so called or led to, they might feel left behind. And so because they feel left behind, then they end up having this sense of resentment or jealousy. And we see that happen a lot in relationships too. And another example is, you know, sometimes one is like maybe both people are headed in the same direction, but one is just going way faster than the other. Maybe they're getting a lot of opportunities or they're just developing personally. They're having a lot of breakthroughs. They're having a lot of growth and it kind of overshadows the other partner. And then that partner feels a bit disengaged and they feel like they're losing their own identity in the relationship because that person's success, that person's growth has kind of taken over. And there are a lot of limiting beliefs that can occur in the mind around this topic of evolution. And so what holds people back from evolving and growing and becoming a better version of themselves? The first one is fear of failure. So some people feel like they are just scared to take risks or try new things and become that new person because they're unfamiliar with it. And they're like, I don't want to step out and become this new version of myself because what if I fail in being that new version of myself? And they think of it as a reflection of their abilities, but it's not. We have to embrace failure as a stepping stone to success. If you fail, it generally brings you right back to square one, but it it's back to square one with more information. So you just use that information. You're like, okay, this didn't work. What's the lesson that I can learn here? And I'm not saying that like failure is fun. It's like, yay, let's fail all the time. But actually there's something to be said about let's fail and let's fail fast because you learn more and then you can do more. But I think if we were to become more accepting with failing, we would be less afraid to try new things or just to try and push ourselves to try to push through barriers. And it's like, even from a small age, so many children have a fear of trying new things. They have a fear of even saying an answer out loud. They have a fear of making a mistake. And we really need to create a space where mistakes are okay. And failure is okay. And it can even be celebrated. And when we're celebrating the failure, just celebrate the fact that you tried. Celebrate 
taking that step, taking that initiative. The second limiting belief is I'm not good enough. And boy, oh boy, is this a big one. It comes up over and over and over again. And a lot of times, if you are doubting your accomplishments or your qualifications, it's because deep down, you feel like you don't deserve that success or you don't deserve um, that new identity. And usually that message has come from somewhere. And I've talked about this on the podcast before, right? It, it comes, somebody's told you that. Somebody told you growing up that you weren't good enough. And you've got to shut that lie down and you've got to reframe it and say that you are confident in your skills. You're confident in the value that you have and that you recognize it. The third limiting belief is around judgment, a fear of judgment and what others are going to think of you. So as you become this new version of yourself, especially like some people don't have the best reputation, right? Some people want to be very far removed from the person that they used to be. And it can be really hard when you're trying to become a new person, especially if the people around you only see you how you used to be. And maybe those are the same people that are very close to you. And maybe they want you to still have that same former identity. And so now you're worried about, well, what are they going to think if I become a new person? A good example of this is like you always see this in movies when there's a gang, right? And somebody in a gang decides they're leaving the gang. They want to change their life. So they break away. But the people around them are not in support. They're like, no, no, no. You signed up to be a part of this gang. You've got to stay with us. You're one of us. Who do you think you are? You think you're better than us? No, this is your identity. This is who you are. This is who you're going to be forever, right? And so those people kind of take over and they want to control that person's mind and they are unwilling to let that person evolve and grow. And that's really dangerous. And that's why it's so important, like, Who is the support circle that is around you? Because they are the ones who are either going to lift you up or pull you down. And so I want to know, if have you ever had any of those thoughts before? Do any of them resonate with you? And if they do, I want to ask you, well, how do you evolve? How do you move forward? How do you grow? And the answer is that you have to adapt a growth mindset. So when we're thinking about personal growth, and sometimes it's called personal development, sometimes it's called self-improvement, this is the continuous process of developing and expanding your knowledge, your skills, and abilities. It's all about becoming a better version of yourself. And I really hope that this podcast is something that you are listening to in support of becoming a better version of yourself because this is why I do it. And it's all, it's not just for you. It's for me too. By me doing this podcast, I am learning. I am improving. I am growing and becoming a better version of myself. And when you embrace personal growth, you challenge the beliefs that you've had previously, and it helps you to expand your horizons. And just your mentality, your mindset, it helps you to make shifts in your perspective. And this changes your confidence, it changes your outlook, and it changes even the way that you feel about yourself. And we're shifting from a fixed perspective to a growth perspective. Or we might say we're shifting from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. So what exactly is a growth mindset? Well, it's a term that's coined by a psychologist. Her name is Carol Dweck. And She described a growth mindset as the belief that one's abilities and intelligence can be developed and improved through dedication, hard work, and learning. This is in contrast to a fixed mindset. In a fixed mindset, individuals believe that their talents and intelligence are static. They can't be changed. And so a growth mindset is better because it allows you to become more resilient, more adaptable, more flexible to different challenges and obstacles that might come your way. Now, when we think about growth and evolution, sometimes, yeah, it's your friends that are holding you back and they're, they're not willing to see your growth or they don't want you to become that better version of yourself. But sometimes the opposition is not with others. It's actually with yourself. 
And you have to allow yourself to realize that you've evolved and changed. Don't hold on to past versions of yourself that you've already shed. You need to step away from the old snake skin and embrace the new you. Your past is your past, so let's focus on the present and focus on your future. Because if staying focused on the past for too long will prevent you from moving forward. That's why you don't stay in therapy forever. How long can you focus on the past? I mean, once you've healed, it's time to move forward. It's time to move on. And I really had to work hard to let go of a teenage version of myself. That person was really defiant, really, really loud, and really aggressive, and really angry. And it was hard to let go of that identity because even though I had worked hard and I was doing a lot of self-improvement, personal development work, and I felt like I had changed a lot of those qualities, at least to an extent, I had definitely improved them. For a long time, it felt like everybody else only saw the old me. And I remember I eventually had to start pushing back and saying to my friends, like, I'm not the person anymore. And I want to tell you, sometimes you have to just rest. You can't spend all your time trying to convince people that you've changed. And frankly, you don't owe explanations to other people too. Because sometimes people are so busy criticizing you, they're not even looking at their own selves to realize that actually they have their own work that they should be minding and tending to. And if you know your truth, you just need to stand in it, walk in it, and own it. Because your actions will speak louder than words. So don't waste your energy trying to convince people of things, trying to convince people that you've changed, convince people that you've grown, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the day, if you are happy with the person you are now or you're happy with the progress you're making, then that is all that matters. And even for myself, like I'm still a work in progress. I'm continuously evolving and becoming more and more like the future version of myself that I want to be. It's like I'm Natalie 13.0. Every year I get a new release, just like the iPhone. And just like we can accept Apple's new iPhone releases, we need to accept people's new releases and their new versions of themselves that they reveal to us. We need to give them a chance. They are allowed to evolve and that transformation will be even better than the new iPhones. And that transformation will be even better than the new iPhones. So I want to ask you, are you the same person that you were five years ago? Do you feel like you like the person you are right now? And if you are to evolve, what's one thing you change about yourself and why? So now that we've talked about growth and evolution, well, let's say that you do want to be confident in your own journey, your own transformation. What are some practical ways you can do that? Well, the first I would say is you've got to determine what you want out of life. Because this is going to be your anchor, your blueprint that guides you through the decisions that you make in life. And with my clients, I do this early on. I usually do it in our second session. And it steers the boat for our entire time together. It's so important that you figure out some kind of dream, vision, or blueprint for your life and know specifically exactly what you want. Because you can't get what you don't know that you want. The second thing is to use a tool called JASP when making decisions in support of the new you. JASP is an acronym, so J-A-S-P. And this is a tool I made up, again, using with my coaching clients, but I find it so helpful when you're trying to make decisions. So the J stands for joy. Is a decision that you're making, is it going to bring joy to your life? A, is it in alignment? Is it in alignment with your core values? And is it in alignment with that vision that you have for yourself? S, is it sustainable? Can you keep doing this day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year? And P, is it leading you closer to your purpose? Is it in alignment with your purpose? 
You can use that tool to help you when you're making decisions. The third strategy is simply to ignore other people's opinions. Listen, they don't matter. If you are confident in the person you are, if you are confident in the person you're becoming, you're confident in the actions you're taking, you're confident in your mindset, you're confident in how you show up in the world, you feel like you show up authentically and joyfully and meaningfully and that you're engaged in your purpose, then you do you and hold your head up high. Because a lot of other people will always have something to say and you just simply can't take it on. Just let them talk and let their words fly. And obviously, if the people are important to you, then you can hear them out. But just because they are of importance to you in your life, it doesn't mean that their words automatically get to take hold in your life and that their opinions automatically get to take hold in your life. You still have agency over your own self. So you choose what you want to accept and what you want to reject. And the last thing is to think practically. Who or what can support me in becoming a new version of myself? So is there a friend, a coach, a guide, a mentor, a spiritual leader, a counselor, someone who can offer me support alongside this personal transformation? And what resources can support me? Are there books, podcasts, videos, sermons, etc. that can help me in my journey? And just alongside that, are there role models that have already undergone the transformation I want for myself or at least one similar? And if so, is there a story out there somewhere in the world? And if it is, go learn their story and learn their journey as much as you can and see what steps that person took to get where they are now or to at least get from the A to the B, right? Because when we're looking at transformation, we're not thinking an A to Z transformation. We think A to B, B to C, C to D because that is what makes the transformation stick and that's what we're after. So if you do find a role model, autobiographies are a really great example of how you can find out about someone's story in depth and understand and see if maybe you can work with them or at least if you can model some of those steps for yourself. So for today's call to action, I want you to determine the person that you want to become and then go and become that person. It's just that simple. As you tackle challenges and push forward on your own journey of self-improvement and personal growth and development, and you adhere a growth mindset, I want you to know that you are blazing a trail that's uniquely yours. So don't worry about doing the right thing or the perfect thing. Does the left foot go in front of the right foot? It's your own path. So you can figure it out. There is no wrong answer. I invite you to say today's affirmation with me. I am constantly evolving and expanding, unlocking new levels of potential within myself. So in closing, I just want you to know that you can do whatever it is that your heart desires. You do not have to stay stuck. You can evolve. You can grow. You can become that future version of yourself that you want to be. And you can make those improvements moment by moment, day by day. Tomorrow, you can be a better version of yourself than you are today. And if something in this episode resonated with you and you wanted to learn more about my Wellness Reset one-to-one coaching program, then just book a free discovery call in the show notes. I want you to find rest, harmony, and joy, and I want you to restore your relationship and identity with yourself. This podcast is brought to you by Captivate Podcasting Platform. Start a free trial by clicking the links in the show notes. Until next time, continue to serve yourself, your loved ones, and your community from a full cup.